shop just outside Kennesaw here in North Georgia. Well today's project is this beautiful armed easy chair. I guess it's a Queen Anne style sort of. It's a, you know, it's a modern reproduction of a classical style. It's an absolutely beautiful chair. It's beautifully upholstered. Uh, the wood is, uh, is elegantly carved. This was probably a very, very expensive chair when it was bought. I, I don't know how old it is, maybe 10 years old, 20 years old, I have, I have no idea. But anyways, as I said before, anytime you move or store furniture, you run the risk of damaging it. And during the move from the old mall to the new antique mall, one of my wife's friends suffered some damage to this chair. This isn't ours, this belongs to a, a friend of my wife's. The story that we got was that her family member had tripped over it during the move and it, it was it was scratched. Well, I'll tell you what, this chair took a shot. Uh, I'll show you the damage here in just a minute and then we will get going uh, fixing it. As a side note, this is my favorite kind of thing to do with furniture. I love repairing it and touching up the finish. Rote, strip, stain, re-top coat, refinishing jobs, although they have to be done and the end results are normally spectacular, eh, I, they don't really float my boat quite as much as a, as a specific repair will. But let me bring you in here and show you what we're dealing with with this chair. And here's the back of the chair and you can see the huge scrape to this corner, a huge scrape to the top, and a huge scrape to the side. And it's almost as if the, the back of the chair hit the ground like this and then dragged across. And to further demonstrate that, I'm holding the chair up now, so excuse me if it's moving, but you can see the backs of both rear legs have also been skinned right off. Okay, and if you look at the, uh, the back, here's the damage to the left side, here's the damage to the crest, and here's the damage to the right side. Drop right under this damage on the left side, and you can see there's a seam where the chair comes together. This is a glue seam from the manufacturer where the top and the sides of the back were put together. There's a, a section here, a very straight grain that goes down, and you can see it broke clean through. I'm kind of spreading that apart now, but you can see that split there goes through the top and onto the front. I'm not going to take this upholstery out or off to fix this. I think I can get enough glue in to the sides, top, and back uh, to affect a proper repair. But that's probably this is this is without a doubt the biggest issue with the chair and let's get to work on uh, repairing this chair. Okay, it took a few minutes to cover with plastic and uh, painter's tape all of the upholstery. You will only make this mistake once. If you do not cover upholstery before you get started, I promise you, you will drip something on it. And all it takes is one little drop of mahogany stain, dye stain, epoxy, and sometimes even glue and you have got yourself a big old problem so protect your upholstery. Okay, I want to show you what I'm thinking for re-gluing this fractured piece again this is this is really the bread and butter of this whole repair. Alright as you can see this I can move this piece up and down and it's com broken completely through. Now by using you know, the techniques that I've shown you where I can spread this wood and then work PVA yellow wood glue into this entire joint, I can get it back together and then we get it back together as close as we can. Now the question then becomes, this is cracked at an angle and because it's got upholstery on it, there's tension pulling it towards itself, but you can see I can still move it so the question then becomes, how much clamping force do we need in this direction to make this repair a good one? And what I did is just by taking a bar clamp 
and running it across the one portion of this curved surface that it'll stick to, and I'll pull out and show you here in just a minute. I've got enough force laterally now that I can't move this joint apart. So let me let me back you up and I'll show you what I did. So that's all we needed to do to get the force necessary to go this way to keep this joint tight. Now, anytime you're dealing with curves, clamping curved surfaces, obviously it's tough on the clamps and tough on you. So what I may have had to do if this solution didn't offer itself up was to use the curve of this back as a template, draw a curve on a square piece of wood like a 2x4, run it through the bandsaw, and then use that between the clamps and the table, or the clamps and the chair, and that would give me something to grab onto. So that's how we're going to go about doing it. And then the other thing we want to make sure is as we draw this together that we get this front seam as absolutely close to perfect as we can. Because if we've got to do any touch-up repairs or sanding, I'd rather it be on the back than on the front. So let me get ready to start. Uh, start, and you can see I've got that tape right up to the upholstery. I don't need to get any glue on the upholstery, or God forbid, any dye. I think I'm ready for the glue up. It's about 40 degrees here, and obviously the uh, the glue's been stored in the shop overnight, and it's cold. So what I did is I uh, took it inside and boiled some water and just sat that in there to warm the glue up. It's probably around 100 degrees. That'll help it flow better, and then. After a number of viewer comments regarding getting an injector, I've got an in, bought an injector that's loaded up with hot glue and it's sitting in the in the water so it stays nice and warm. And then uh, I've got some other there we go. I've got some other things at the ready. Someone suggested dental floss. I've got going to give that a try. And I'll even try the compressed air trick again. Hopefully, I won't spray myself with glue this time. So this right here is our next center of attention. So let's get ready to get it done. And here we go. And of course, never fails, but the camera is exactly in the way. Yeah, heating up this glue made a big difference. It's flowing very nicely. Kind of a funny story, I had bought a, uh, a turkey baster, uh, one of those things for injecting turkeys with marinade at a yard sale with the intention of using it as a glue injector. And when I finally went around to buying the, the glue injector, it turns out everything was exactly the same. It was the same, the same injector and the only difference were the the little brass nozzles that came with it, which I thought was kind of cool. Alright, and now I'm using the dental floss to try to work the glue down into the joint. And I think it's working pretty well, except for where it's hanging up on broken pieces of wood that I don't want to shatter off inside the joint. So I think I'll leave well enough alone with that. That was a good tip. Y'all ought to get a charge out of this one. Let's see what happens. Well, you see, I told you with a little practice I'd eventually would get this to work. That's, that's driving that glue down in there. That's great. Very good. Okay, I'm going to flip this chair over and glue the back side, so stand by. Let me pop the injector back into the hot water while we were flipping the chair around. And you know what? I forgot to tape the back side of this to protect the upholstery. 
Great time to discover that, huh? And some dental floss. What's nice about the dental floss is if you get tangled up, you don't have to come out the way you went in. Just let go of one edge and, and out she comes. Any of you that are around my age will understand that our bodies are reminding us of all the stupid stuff we did when we were young men. I was involved in contact sports, combat, you know, martial arts for a long time and between my knees and my wrists and elbows and I am reminded of it daily and sometimes it's not so bad and sometimes it's a something I gotta deal with. I guess it's all part of getting old. Alright, well I think we've got the glue worked in there the best we can. So let's flip it back over so we can take a real good look at the front side of this and uh and get this clamped up so we're happy with it. Well, the one thing that uh, dental floss did was pull up some splinters out of here. I think we're going to get that nice and tight. Here's our final clamping scheme. I think this came together exceptionally well. Uh, even across the top here, there's effectively no, no height difference in this joint. Uh, these two clamps are completely covering the joint in the front, but when I took one off to check, it appeared to be completely lined up correctly. And then around back, we've also got it lined up correctly. So I think it's come out as, as best we can. Uh, there you go. A thumbs up to all the uh, Lost Mountain viewers who contributed ideas on gluing uh, cracks. We used the dental floss technique that worked very well. We used the uh, glue injector which worked very well and we also used compressed air which this is the second time I tried it. The first time was a colossal failure because I'm a half wit but uh, by throttling back the, uh, the uh, air pressure it worked very well at moving that glue into the joint. And then obviously the other thing that we did to help was we heated the glue up by uh, putting the glue bottle in some boiling water. So, and that helped it flow in as well. So we're going to leave this glued up and let it set up overnight because this is a crucial repair to this chair. And tomorrow we will take it all apart and we'll work on gluing those arms up tight and start with some of the finish repair issues. Good morning. It's a beautiful, crisp January morning here in North Georgia. 33 degrees. Clear skies. What a beautiful day. What do you say we get in the shop and see if we can get something done today? Let's get these clamps off and see how we did. Okay, here's the crack across the front. It came together very, very well. It's almost perfectly flush. With, you know, you're seeing the the light color here, where the where the color got knocked away when it broke. But the uh, the wood seam here is is almost perfectly flush. Not 100% flush, but 
nearly, nearly perfect. It's very smooth along the back. We have this chip here where you can see my finger. We have that piece of wood that's going to get glued in next. Let me bring you around back. And again, almost perfectly flush. What you see here is some dried glue. This will clean up and color out very well, so I'm very happy with this. We're nice and flush across the top. So a good repair. Now I'm going to take this little chip out. I'm going to inlay that back in there. We'll tape that down and we will move on with the chair. Okay, as you can see, I've got this area taped off. I'm going to use cyanoacrylate glue to apply this piece. What I'll do is I'll put some CA glue on a uh, old piece of sandpaper. I've got a cheap brush here that's got plastic bristles. I'll just throw it away when I'm done. I'll apply the CA glue in here, inlay the piece, and hit it with some activator. And there we go. Perfect fit. Boy, am I glad I found that piece laying on the floor. Okay, let's move on. And there's our, what our repair came out looking like after I just touched up with some color and uh, a light coat of lacquer across the top here. We're not through with it yet, but it came out very, very well. I'm very happy with it. Let's start working on some of the color loss on the back side of the chair. As you can see, we've got a lot of scraping and broken wood fibers that are standing up here. So what I'm going to do is take some 150. Now also notice that the chair is, comes up on this plane here and then angles over. We want to preserve that line. So what I'm going to do is with 150 grit sandpaper following the grain. Now the grain on the top is going this way and the grain on the bottom is going up and down because of that turn. But I'm just trying to knock off any of those loose fibers and get this nice and smooth again so we can seal it up. So let me get to it. I'll bring you back. And I misspoke earlier. The grain on this top piece is running in this direction, of course. It's the grain on this piece here that's, that's running up. And as you can see, what I've been able to do with the 150 is to get this all smoothed out and preserve that corner, this round over. The best I can. A lot of that was removed during the initial damage. But that's what we're going to do. We've got this one just about done, just about ready. And then I've still got this one this one here and this one will be a little bit easier because all I've got to do is take it across and if the camera's shaking I apologize I'm actually I've actually run my arm through the tri through the tripod so I can uh, and reach it and still give you a chance to see what I'm doing well that's what we're going to do we've got the bottoms of the legs to take care of as well but this is 150 and the purpose of this is just to get all these loose fibers out and get this smoothed out enough that we can seal it. Now as I run my finger across here I can feel little indentations where when this crashed into 
the abrasive surface, probably a parking lot, I would imagine, it gouged in here. So I'm, I think I can sand those out. Obviously, if they were deeper, I'd have to fill them and then sand them flush, but I think I can just get them sanded out. So I'm going to uh, be playing around with this for the next half hour or so, and I will bring you back. Well, here's some unhappy news. As I was sanding this, I started to notice the sanding dust getting caught here, and I unwrapped it, brought it around, and as you can see, we have nearly an identical crack on the other side that I just never saw. I think it had been uh, pulled cover, you know, pulled tight, and the color wasn't color different wasn't showing, and I didn't see it. I can't get this apart to glue it, so the only way to fix this is to drill little holes in here, inject adhesives, and clamp it up, and then come back and fill those holes probably with wax. So the uh, the fun just doesn't stop on Miss Gale's chair. So I think what I'm going to do is finish sanding what needs to be sanded, and I'll get a coat of shellac sealer on everything, and then we're going to come back and we're going to start to work on, on this crack and see if we can get this stabilized. But uh, here we go again. And what I have here is some seal coat, which as you know is a de-wax shellac, and I have it diluted about 3 to 1 with denatured alcohol, and I'm just going to put it on here as a seal coat to seal this raw wood. And I'll be back when I'm done. I want to explain my thought process on this repair. So if you're facing one yourself, you can consider what I've decided to do. This fracture is all the way through but it doesn't displace. In other words, I can't jack this up and get this open enough to get any glue in there that's going to substantially affect a repair on this. So what I've decided to do is to drill holes right along this fracture and inject glue. Now the smallest needle that I have, and it's been broken and repaired, is this one here and this is just under one-eighth of an inch in diameter. So I've, I've taken a one-eighth inch drill bit, chucked it up in my drill, and then using this, it's called a drill stop. It's just a metal bushing with a set screw, and it allows you to control the depth of the cut. Now, you can also mark it with a piece of tape, but the problem with that is, is that the drill catches it can go in past it. And when I, sit this, when I set this against the side, that drill stop, will bottom out before I drill through the other side. This way all I've got to do is affect minor finish repairs along this crack on the back side. I should be able to inject enough glue into this using this setup to affect a good repair and then all I'll do is clamp, clamp it to keep it flush, run a clamp across here and let the glue set and in the meantime I should be able to work around it so I can keep going on these color repairs. If I have to stop, I have to stop, but obviously we all have stuff we've got to do and, and schedules are, uh, are important. So that's the thought process that I used when I came up with a solution. I gotta go inside and heat up my glue because it is freezing cold this morning. And when I get the glue heated up and I get this loaded with some glue, we'll drill these holes, two, three, probably four of them, inject the glue in there, clamp this up, and let it set and hopefully that should take care of this fracture. I don't see any other way of, of handling this problem uh, absent taking the uh, upholstery off and we all know for this repair which I'm doing for a friend for free this is not an option. Besides if I start tearing this upholstery off this chair will never ever look the same because I have no idea what I'm doing when it comes to upholstery. Here we go!
and there's the holes that we drilled right along that crack line. I didn't go any farther here because I don't want to compromise the, this dimension run the risk of splitting that. Okay, let's blow the side dust out of those holes. Let's inject some glue. I'm not sure if you could see that, but when I blew air into these holes, I saw a movement in the adjacent hole, which means that I'm blowing the glue from one to the other through that crack, which is exactly what we want to do. Okay, I hope you were able to see how that repair worked out, but by drilling these holes in here and leaving the face of it intact, in other words, the holes didn't go all the way to the face, we made all these little cups that were connected by this crack, and when we put that warm glue in there and then hit it with compressed air, you can see the compressed air coming up through the adjacent hole, which means it was helping to force the glue through the crack and up into the next adjacent hole. I want to thank the... Uh, well, heck, let's call them uh, the Lost Mountain Restoration Nation, the LMR Nation, the guys that contributed and, uh, and helped me with this technique, uh, both the injecting and using the compressed air. Uh, I probably would have never thought to use compressed air on this repair, uh, but again, this, that made all the difference in the world. So now we've got a clamp on this. This is pulled together. It's smooth. When this all dries, I'll light sand across here. We'll fill these in, either with wood filler or epoxy or wax, depending on uh, what it looks like when it's all dried up. And this will be done. So again, to the LMR Nation, thank you. I appreciate the contributions. I love to learn just as much as I hope you love to learn by watching the channel. So now that that's done, we can get on to starting to work on the color. What I'm going to do is sand this one more time with 320, put a second coat of sealer on it, and then we'll get ready to color it up. No need for you to see that. I'll bring you back when it's time to start coloring. We have the uh, bare spots now sealed with two coats of uh, diluted de-wax shellac and sand it down to 320. As you know, there's a million different ways of adding color uh, to wood. 
You can use a dye stain, we can use pigments, we can use a wiping stain. In this case I'm going to start with a dye stain, medium brown walnut, and I'm applying it, believe it or not, with a little pipe cleaner only because I grabbed it. Yeah, that's a that's a pretty good match for the base color. And that's what we started with. Now I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna get all the bare wood to this color here, and then we'll do the final uh, matching up probably with some pigments. Now I cannot warn you enough that dye stain and upholstery do not mix very well. So be extremely careful with your dye stain. All right, I got work to do, I'll bring you back. And in case you're wondering, I've got a towel stuffed right up against, tied up against this wood. So even if that dye stain splashes or I drop it or I do something stupid, it's not going to get up on that upholstery. There's one of the legs. I'd say that's a pretty darn good color match. I just put a light mist of uh, lacquer on that to lock that in. We get down here, we've got a pretty good color match, but we need to play around with just a little bit, get some more uh, tones and textures in here. And I think I'm going to do that with some pigments, so that'll be next. And toners, using the techniques that uh, I've showed you before. <laughs> that looks really good. Take you up front, that was the brake that went clean through. You can't even see it any longer. And there we go. I have to apologize, I did not film the final color work that I did on this once I put the uh, base coat down with the dye stain, I came back with lacquer, I'm sorry, with pigments, and I did not show you how I did that. I've got a uh, fairly detailed video under the uh, Restoration of the Duncan Fife desk where I do this pigment technique, but let me show you just real quickly, or let me demonstrate real quickly what I do. First of all, I use this Lac French padding finish, which I believe is really just a thinned out lacquer or a thinned out shellac of some kind as the uh, medium that I use to dampen the uh, the rag with and then I'll dampen the rag, I have it on my have it on my finger and I'll dampen it and then I'll take some color which in this case is uh, burnt umber I use mostly and I'll put my finger, my gloved finger in most cases uh, into the burnt umber and then I'll dab it on to the wet part of this rag right there and then I'll take it and dab it on to the area so you get kind of a random blotting of color and then when you get a layer that you want just take some lacquer and just mist coat it and that kind of seals it in then you can come in with with other colors you know I always start light and then I work my way up to the dark and then as you start to look at the uh, the piece from afar now you'll have modeled uh, color there that'll match and then you can go ahead and grain and usually what I do when I grain is I'll just uh, take some lac French and dip a brush in it and then I'll pour out a little little pile of of this uh, blend all powder and I'll use it as a pigment kind of make my own little paint and then I can kind of do lines with it or whatever but that's that's the technique that's that's how I did that and uh, let me show you what it came, how it came out up close. And there you go. Well, hey, I hope you enjoyed this restoration of this beautiful contemporary chair we did for Miss Gail. I think it came out great. So listen, from our shop just outside Kennesaw here in North Georgia, best regards. Thanks for watching. Take good care. We'll see you next video. Bye.